Welcome to another one of my just-in-time endodontic educational episodes. Hi, I'm Cliff Ruddle and I'm really happy to be with you today. Thank you for joining me so we can learn more about endodontics together. My assignment today is to talk about canal preparation. Specifically, I'm going to focus on glide path management and shaping canals. Well-shaped canals promote three-dimensional cleaning and filling root canal systems. Speaking of glide path management and shaping canals, let's radiographically evaluate this maxillary second bicuspid for endodontic treatment. From a restorative standpoint, note the recurrent decay and that the clinical crown has been extensively prepared. Endodontically, note the pulp chamber has receded below the crest of bone and that the root is dilacerated in its apical one-third. Experienced clinicians appreciate that canals are virtually always more curved than the roots that hold them. I have found that endodontic performance improves dramatically when we use the strategy, start with the end in mind. This means try to visualize the post-treatment result on the pretreatment film. If we're going to carry out with this concept, then we need a treatment plan, a mechanical strategy, and we should be utilizing the best and most proven instruments available in the marketplace today. I know that might be subjective, but let me just say this. I have practiced for 40 years, I have taught for 37 years, and I come before thousands and thousands of dentists like you on an annual basis. I can tell you that what we'll talk about today will make a major difference in your clinical practice. Although I've described canal preparation many times, in many different ways over many many years based on the level of endodontic development in any given era today I will describe what I believe to be the best and most proven way to repair canals using continuous rotation let's get started today's episode on canal preparation will be conducted on this maxillary animated molar the reason we're going to use an animated molar is so we can be very clear and visually see a lot of the work that's done inside the canal regarding dental debris, mud, how the shaping progresses, right on down to the final preparation. When you look at the maxillary molar tooth, it's nice to recall that it's the most frequently researched tooth in the mouth. It's the largest tooth by volume, but sadly or regrettably, it's probably the most misunderstood tooth in the mouth, and it's led to a lot of misunderstandings during endodontic treatment. Probably it's related to the anatomy of this tooth. Today's assignment is going to focus on the distal buckle. Notice the distal buckle root is deceptively simple if you look at the root itself. But if you begin to zone in on the system that moves down through that root, you can see there's multiplanar curvature and the canal makes an abrupt recurvature towards the distal and the portal of exit is actually on the distal aspect of the distal buckle root. Of course, when you look down on this tooth, you're starting to be able to see where you're going to cut your outline pattern because access is everything in good endodontics. In fact, the access pattern should include the orifices. The size of the access cavity isn't a school of thought. It's not a personal philosophy. The size of the access cavity is dictated by the orifices on the pulpal floor. The walls then should diverge from the pulpal floor out to the occlusal table. It's important to finish the accesses, and a good indicator for finished accesses is the axial walls are flared, flattened, and finished. Well, now that you're into the tooth safely, we're now to our assignment of canal preparation. And of course, it all starts with glide path management. There's a lot of misunderstandings internationally what glide path management really means, what really is a glide path. So my multimedia team had a little fun and we took some examples outside of the world of dentistry and specifically outside of the world of endodontics to show you examples in everyday life of a glide path. Here we go. Oh, you might want to fasten your seat. There's a lot of curves, there are some recurvatures, there's abrupt turns, and all of this, whether you're talking about a roller coaster, a luge flying down, an ice track sliding towards the finish line, or whether you're on a water slide, 
and you're following that track down to the pool below, what all these examples have in common is there is a smooth, reproducible glide path to the terminus. Now that you know what a glide path is in a fun way, that's something that can be considered when you look at these post-treatment films. It's easy to look at these films and be somewhat excited and enthusiastic about root canal system anatomy, but what all these cases have in common is they were all accessed, every one of the canals was negotiated, a glide path was confirmed, and that glide path then could be shaped. And we all know that shaping facilitates cleaning and shaping facilitates filling root canal systems. So the instruments traditionally used for glide path management have been the ISO 10 and 15 hand file. Notice these are fixed tapered files and they're stainless steel. Always appreciate that the 15 file is 50% bigger at its working tip than the 10 file. So when you throw in that they're stainless steel and fixed tapered with a big percentage change between files, the 15 files led to a lot of problems iatrogenically internationally blocks, ledges, transportations, and regrettable outcomes. So many times around the world there's been emphasis on how can we improve glide path management and perhaps consider eliminating the 15 file. Densply Tulsa Dental Specialties and Densply MyFair, their solution to the problem was ProGlider. ProGlider is a revolutionary new instrument. It's made of nickel titanium, not stainless steel, and more importantly it has M-wire technology which reduces the potential for cyclic fatigue by 400 percent. If you look at the file carefully you'll notice it's not fixed tapered, there's progressive tapers. And there are over eight changing tapers along the active portion of the file. The file would spin then at 300 RPMs and a torque could be anywhere from 400 to 520 gram centimeters based on the motor you have. Well, now that we know a little bit about the file, back to our 10 and our 15 file, you can begin to see the geometries, the cross-sectional geometries of these various instruments every four millimeters up the active portion. It's kind of fun to compare the Pro Glider with the white 15 hand file. Notice that the Pro Glider is virtually the same in the front end but notice how different the cross-sectional geometries get as we move to D8, D12, and D16. What I'm saying is one pro glider can make a significantly bigger pathway than a single 15 file. So the new proposal for Cliff Ruddle and what I'm teaching is glide path management just got a lot better because we can use the 10 file to catheterize and secure the canal, then we can expand that slide path with one single ProGlider file. So back to our distal buccal root, we've talked a little bit about what the glide path is and what the tools are. The next thing to talk about is do we take the files to length immediately or would it be wise to work perhaps two-thirds of the canal, get pre-enlargement done, so we have improved access to the canals apical one-third. In general, in shorter canals, wider canals, and straighter canals, we have permission to take our small size hand file to length immediately. But oftentimes in longer, more narrow, and more curved canals, it's wise to not try to negotiate the full length of the canal at one time. You can see that many colleagues do, in fact, use a viscous chelator like Glide, ProLube, or RC Prep. They tediously work the 10 file. Oftentimes it won't go, so they'll drop to an 8. And triumphantly, they'll even go to the 06 to get to the length, and they feel quite good about this. Many times when we do this, we need to appreciate a lot of things are happening beyond you were able to negotiate the canal. Notice the rate of taper of the file is more or less the rate of taper of the canal. There's virtually no irrigant in this system. Further, the file is going to generate debris, and that debris frequently gets pushed into the lateral anatomy. Finally, these canals are being instrumented by stainless steel files, and we have to wonder, can we really pre-curve a file and pass it through a canal where there's canyons of restrictive dentin? So I think if you look at these two images side by side, you can see the breakthrough. 
The breakthrough, which I described and started teaching more or less in the late 70s, was to pre-enlarge a canal. Pre-enlarging a canal is similar to a restorative dentist reducing the occlusion, reducing the tooth, buckle the lingual, and placing the margins on a clinical crown last. Notice with pre-enlargement, the file is free in its upper two-thirds, and when you feel handle pressure, it's relaying to the file engaging dentin towards its terminal extent. There are many advantages to pre-enlargement, and I've written extensively about this, and you're welcome to go to my website or this textbook to learn more about it. If we pre-enlarge a canal, we have a lot more apical one-third control with our hand files. The ear again in a pre-enlarged canal is there in sufficient volume that it can penetrate, circulate, and begin cleaning into the uninstrumental portions of the root canal space. Clearly, plenty of research has shown that a pre-enlarged canal decreases post-operative pain because there's less likelihood of pushing debris inadvertently periapically. Finally, when we have a pre-enlarged canal, its apical one-third can usually accept a larger instrument. This improves radiographic control. This also enhances the accuracy and reliability of all apex locators. So what is the secret to pre-enlargement? In a sequential glide path, we fill the chamber with a viscous chelator. There are three advantages of a viscous chelator. A viscous chelator gives us a superior lubricant. It emulsifies tissue by preventing the readherence of collagenous vital tissue. And finally, the debris that's being generated is more effectively held in suspension. So, viscous chelators are examples would be ProLube, Glide, or RC Prep. Any time Ruddle's going into any part of a canal where I've never been before, I need forgiveness and I need the viscous chelator. The tin file now can be used to explore and discover and to negotiate a portion of the canal. Even in longer, narrower, and more curved canals, we can usually carry a tin file about two-thirds of the overall expected working length of that canal. Once we have the tin file up about two-thirds of the way, let's move the file in and out in little short amplitude strokes to verify that we have a glide path in preparation for mechanical canal preparation. Any part of the canal that is secured, and I repeat, any part of the canal that is deemed secure clinically can be shaped. Shaping is always done in a bath of full strength sodium hypochlorite. One single shaping file, as we'll shortly see, can pre-enlarge, remove coronal interferences, remove triangles of dentin, and expand the shape almost optimally in the upper two-thirds. With the upper two-thirds optimally shaped, we're free to go back to our viscous chelator because again we're going to place a file into that part of the canal we've never been before. So the viscous chelator will give us lubrication, emulsification, and it'll keep the debris in suspension. It is at this time when your rubber stop reaches your selected reference point, you can be thinking about working length, either using conventional films, digital radiography, or apex locators. Certainly when we have a known working length, we want to confirm patency. Remember the canal was patent before Ruddle went into it. And then of course, if we're going to use mechanical instruments, which is the whole concept here in modern endodontics, we need to have a sliding path that can accept the tin file in a smooth and reproducible way. Once we have a smooth reproducible glide path to the terminus, we can shape a little region of three, four, five millimeters and blend the deep shape up into the body of the previously prepared canal. We'll talk in a little bit about apical diameter and the apical taper. I'll only say this at this point. Pro taper is perhaps one of the only files in the world in full rotation that gives you the seven, eight, and nine percent deep shapes that allow irrigant to actually circulate into the uninstrumental portions of the root canal space. Well, we're in the tooth. You know what a glide path is. We've talked about the armamentarium, and we've even talked about the sequential glide path. We can dispense your favorite viscous chelator. I use ProLube, and go ahead and fill the pulp chamber up virtually full. Now you can use a tin file, and a pre-curved tin file can be inserted, and it will carry viscous chelator by surface tension on the cutting flutes. The instrument is introduced into the canal, and in this case, the entry angle into the pulp chamber is quite abrupt. 
so a little gentle back and forth reciprocation on the handle will pull the file down into the canal. When we reciprocate the handle, it feeds the file progressively deeper into the canal. When the handle is snug, pull. Each feeded in pull is a cutting cycle, and after every few cutting cycles, move the instrument up and down vertically in little short one millimeter amplitude strokes. What this serves to do is carry more viscous chelator into the canal. Further, it keeps debris more effectively in suspension. And each little back and forth stroke serves to refine, smooth, and expand the glide path. Continue reciprocating the handle. That'll gently draw the file progressively deeper into the canal. And what I want to really point out is we really don't want to over manipulate the handle. Just little gentle back and forth motions when the handle is snug, pull, and that's another cutting cycle. When you're about two thirds of the way up the route, what we can notice is that we could go to an 08, we could go to an 06, but that's not the objective in a sequential glide path strategy. Now move the file in little short amplitude strokes and begin to check to see if you in fact have a smooth reproducible glide path in this region of the canal. If you can confirm that, the canal is deemed secured and this is an opening for rotary instrumentation. Irrigate with sodium hypochlorite, remove all your viscous chelator, never spin a file at 300 RPMs in a canal loaded with viscous chelator. The proglider is allowed to float, follow, and run into the canal. Literally, two, three, four seconds, you will reach the level where the tin file was and you've expanded the shape considerably at this moment of treatment. Notice, however, there's still an awkward triangle of dentin. Notice the canal is still badly underprepared, but we have a glide path. That's what we're talking about, having a slide path to accommodate passively and safely mechanical shaping files. Now that we have got a glide path, let's digress for a moment and talk about the files that we'll use for shaping this canal. I'm going to show you the ProTaper system. ProTaper came to market in 2001, and at this moment, it is the most utilized system in the world. So this is what Ruddle is using because it has the most success of any file ever made. There are three shaping files and you can see that there are three finishing files and appreciate that there's actually an F4 and an F5, but we're showing you today what is typically generally most utilized. Notice specifically the last line, variable tapers. This is the first system in the world to introduce progressive tapers over the active portion of a single file. ProTaper runs at 300 RPMs and 520 gram centimeters. I want to point this out because there's a lot of disagreement on this, but if you look at the peer-reviewed journals, there are plenty of scientific articles that show that progressively tapered files should be run at high torque. It is dangerous to change the torque from one pro taper instrument to the next. In fact, if you want to increase your breakage, change your torque. So maximum torque for all pro taper files ensures maximum safety. Let's look at the shapers. The shapers have a convex triangular cross section and there's three of them, but notice one is quite short. The file on the left, Shaper X, is only 19 millimeters long and it's the industry leader for pre-enlarging canals. It can't possibly reach the apical foramen of most canals, so that's why we have two other shapers that are used to reach length, and that's the purple and the white. Let's look at SX to appreciate a little bit more. Shaper X, or the auxiliary file, is 19 millimeters in its overall length. If you divide the file into thirds, you will notice that the middle one-third of the file is actually the part of the file that's designed to cut. The apical one-third of this instrument is not designed to engage and do heavy work. Simply, it is the steering wheel on the nickel titanium file that guides the instrument through curvatures. So we don't want to cut in the apical one-third. We want to look at our file clinically as we use it 
to make sure debris is piling up in the middle one-third, and we rarely go more than about two-thirds down any given canal. Fortuitously, for you old-time Gates Glidden lovers, we have four GGs, a GG1, 2, 3, 4 at D6, 7, 8, and 9, and you can read those cross-sectional geometries. So we have a way to rapidly pre-enlarge canals using Shaper X. Well, let's quickly look at the finishers. The finishers, there's five instruments total, but three that are most frequently used. And again, as you would imagine, the color identification on the band, yellow, red, and blue, corresponds to a tip of 20, 25, and 30. The tapers are 7, 8, and 9% respectively, but please understand the tapers of 7, 8, and 9% are limited to the apical one-third of the file, and behind this fixed taper, we have progressively decreasing percentage tapers over the rest of the active portion. I want to come back to this one more time to make a sledgehammer point. The first system in the world to do this, and virtually the only system today that still does this, is ProTaper. Notice the shapers, by design, work in the body of the canal. The shapers have progressively increasing percentage tapers, whereas on the right image, the finishers have decreasing percentage tapers over their back end. This is another explanation why you need high torque. The shapers are working away from their delicate tips. They're working towards their stronger, bigger, and more efficient blades. On the other hand, the finishers at 7, 8, and 9% tapers, you need a big torque to turn that cross-sectional mass so you can carve out the shape in the apical one-third. Now for the point. If you want to increase the terminus of the canal, if you want to expand your deep shape, this is the only file system in the world that will allow you to alter your deep shape and not continue to needlessly prepare the coronal two-thirds of the canal. Well, I'm pretty proud of this. Me and my development team, we started working on ProTaper Universal back in 1995. The file was launched in 2001. So more than 12 years ago, we were aware, we were acutely aware of the concept of minimally invasive endodontics. For years, this has been the only file that really respects minimally invasive endodontics. And if you really want to see the take-home message, if you look at any 2508 progressively tapered file versus any 2508 fixed tapered file, please bring your attention to the cross-sectional comparisons along the active portion. But if you look at 77 versus 89, that's massive. That's right in the middle of the file. 93 to 121, I don't know, but this is when we start to over-prepare roots coronally and we worry about strip perfs. Compare 105 to 153, you can begin to see that Pro Taper with its progressive tapers brings something to the party called minimally invasive endodontics. Well, Pro Taper just got a lot better. In 2014, metallurgy kicked in, and through heating and cooling cycles, engineers could find the optimal phase transition between martensite and austenite. And what this means is we have gotten an instrument now that is unbelievably flexible and the greater resistance to cyclic fatigue is over two times the existing ProTaper regular nitai version. Flexibility is what allows instruments to feed through the glide path. Flexibility is what's necessary to do multiplanar curvature. And of course, when instruments are spinning around curves, we definitely want to improve the resistance to cyclic fatigue. ProTaper Gold does precisely this. So back to the tooth that we've been working on where we had the glide path with a chamber full of sodium hypochlorite, let's go in with SX. The take home message is Shaper X is a big brush. I want you to plant that instrument on the outer wall away from furcal danger and brush out on the outstroke and in one or two passes you can pre-enlarge virtually any canal. This is done very, very quickly. It's done safely because we had a glide path. Well, after you take out an instrument that has 19% taper, 
and has four gates slid in the equivalents at D6, 7, and 8, and 9, you can imagine there's significant debris inside the pulp chamber and the canal itself. So go ahead and irrigate after every rotary file. In fact, endodontic religion is, after you remove any given rotary file, always irrigate, recapitulate with a tin file, and re-irrigate. The tin file breaks up debris and moves it into suspension so it can more effectively be liberated from the canal space. Learn to do that to keep your lateral anatomy open during the shaping exercise. Well, we've never been in the apical third, and with an upper two-thirds optimally prepared, let's aspirate out the sodium hypochloride, and let's return by topping off the pulp chamber with a viscous chelator. Remember the viscous chelator will be picked up on the file flutes and dragged down into the critical zone. Reciprocate the handle in very short angles back and forth. That draws the file in. When you see the rubber stop about one or two stops off your reference point, no more reciprocation. Simply slide. I want you to be thinking it's baseball and slide into length. By sliding a pre-curve file to length, we have less likelihood of ripping and tearing the foramen. Schilder called this transportation or iatrogenically relocating the foramen on the external root surface. This would be a perfect time to get a working length film or use your apex locator. Remember, a pre-enlarged canal oftentimes can accept a 15 file for working length. Well, with a known working length, Let's confirm patency. The canal was patent before you started, so let's confirm it's still patent. Patency doesn't mean slide the instrument to and minutely through the foramen a couple times. Patency means sliding the file through the foramen repeatedly and deliberately until the file is loose. Now let's check the glide path. To verify the glide path, pull the file progressively out of the canal in ever-increasing amplitudes and if the instrument can slip and slide, and slide and glide over the apical one-third, not only do you have a glide path, you own the glide path, and in this instance, the glide path can be expanded with ProGlider. We'll want to irrigate, kick out the viscous key layer, top off the sodium hypochlorite, and let ProGlider run. Let it advance and progress towards length. If it bogs down a little bit, lift the file up, this will allow the debris to auger back up the blades of the instrument, freeze up the file so it can engage, cut, and move towards length. So in one or more passes, you can generally carry your pro glider to the full working length. At this point, we have a smooth and reproducible glide path that is ready for mechanical shaping procedures. This probably is the best glide path we could ever cut on planet Earth, because not only is it smooth and reproducible, but it's considerably bigger than a 15 file or any other company's multi-file dedicated glide path sequence files. Look at this anatomy. Isn't this fun? Well, let's get back to our shaping files. And obviously, the first one in the series is the purple stripe. Shaper 1 has never been to length. Shaper 1 is used like a brush. I can't overemphasize brushing. I say brushing around the world, and you all nod your heads and say yes, yes. But brushing is deliberate, it's intentional, and it's purposeful, and it's done on the outer wall on the outstroke. Brushing makes lateral space and allows the bigger Eiffel Towers on S2 to reach length. The Shaper 1 and the Shaper 2 now have projected and carried a shaping wave ever deeper into the curvature. We're now ready to talk about finishing the apical one-third. That brings us to the regressively tapered finishing files. Again, in a fresh bath of reagent, preferably 6% sodium hypochlorite, the finisher is allowed to run towards length. Notice the finishing file is not continuing to cut dentin in the body. Because of gold wire technology, perfectly snakes around that apical curvature and arrives at length. Notice the shape is now expanded and is beautifully blending in to the body of the preparation. 
Astute clinicians learn to look at these instruments when they pull them out of the canal. Learn to look to see where the debris is on the flutes of the instrument. When the apical flutes of any given finishing file are completely loaded, the shape is done. When the F1 came out, there was only some spotty dentinal mud noted on the flutes, so this would encourage the clinician to go a size bigger. That would be the red 2508. Appreciate the 2508 is just an 8% taper in its apical 3 millimeters. Dead soft metal rapidly negotiates the curve in a very safe way, and now you have a blended shape from the foramen to the orifice. Again, look at that apical part of that instrument. Appreciate if it's totally loaded. If the blades are loaded, the shape is done. Well-shaped canals can be three-dimensionally cleaned and root canal systems that are clean can be filled in all their dimensions. A well-shaped canal is easy to fit a cone into. A medium non-standardized gutta percha master cone will easily slide to length. You could also use a size verifier if you were using a gutta core obturation method either a vertical condensation method or a gutta core obturation method is the method of choice if we want to fill root canal systems. It's interesting to rotate the shape around and see it in a way in animation that we never get to appreciate clinically. I know that some of you have CBCT and you can get more of a three-dimensional appreciation but I've learned so much over the years from working with my multimedia team to see how these shapes really look on real teeth, with real root canal systems, with real instruments. The evidence is beginning to show up. And what I'm happy to report is ProTaper Gold's been on the market for just three months and already we're collecting cases from a wide array of doctors from around the world. Michael Nimich is a personal friend of mine, but if we look at the mesial systems, Notice that dog leg on the MB. That's very, very impressive. And then there's two systems in the distal root, and you can see very deep those systems actually divide and have two portals of exit. It's important to have the right technology when we're treating difficult root canal system anatomy. I was really pleased when I received this radiographic image from my friend Scott Doyle. I've known Scott for many years. He's an endodontist. He used to be in the Air Force and he taught Air Force residents. Well, when you look at this image, his enthusiasm was he used ProTaper Gold. Notice how difficult the anatomy is in the mesial system. And please uh, especially note the last two millimeters is an abrupt 90 degree curvature distally. The distal system is a beautiful example of the importance of shaping. When we shape canals well, we can have a sufficient reservoir of irrigant that upon activation can be moved into the uninstrumental portions of the root canal space. Scott was able to move his irrigants and clean out anatomy that was actually uninstrumentable because it's off of a deep division within the distal root. And of course, we can look at Tom McClammy, an endodontist from Scottsdale. Tom has been a dear friend for years. He's now opening up a brand new teaching center, and I'm sure many of you will benefit in the years ahead from being educated from Tom. But look at again at what ProTaper Gold can do in tough anatomy. Well, most of you have heard of John West, a co-inventor, along with Pierre Mosh too, in the ProTaper world. But his son was able to use ProTaper Gold on this maxillary first molar. What was impressive in this case, beyond the curvature, Begin to think and appreciate the diameter of an F2 about 6 millimeters back from its terminus. That would be a fairly significant cross-section, and that cross-section can spin at 300 RPMs and still prepare the shape and not separate through cyclic fatigue. ProTaper Gold has definitely set a new standard for shaping canals. ProTaper Universal has been the number one selling file for many, many years. It's the most used system by endodontist. It's taught in over 950 dental schools to undergraduate students. You can begin to see how this legacy has moved over the last decade. ProTaper Gold, as you know then, got advanced metallurgy, 
this greatly improved flexibility because in our larger previous version of finishers, they were getting a little bit stiff in the F2 and F3 sizes. So now we can snake F2s and F3s where we used to snake S1 and S2 to reach length. Tulsa Dental certainly has developed a wonderful technique card that my multimedia team helped them with. And I think if you look at the upper right area, you can see that one side of the card perfectly explains glide path management as we explained in this episode. If you flip the card over, there's a emphasis now on shaping canals with rotary files and you can see the sequence just as we've described today in the time allotted. And of course there's articles and support material. Here's a couple articles that you can read. You can go to my website. They're downloadable PDF files for free and they'll go into it in more detail than certainly a webinar can do. Much of the world of endodontics has changed in recent years. Ironically, much has stayed the same. But this much is true. There is an ongoing, relentless parade of new files that come to market for shaping canals. The vast majority of these file systems simply instrument canals. But, and this is most important, the canals prepared are neither shaped nor cleaned. Many of the remaining file systems simply copy and low price the most popular utilized systems internationally. However, very few systems bring R&D, follow strict protocols for validation, and then bring genuine innovation. The first step in deciding which NITI system to use is to decide is it predictable. Hi, I'm John West, and I'd like to welcome you to this presentation on the new ProTaper Gold. You know, I've been a clinician and an educator for over 35 years. And without a doubt, the question that comes up number one all the time is what NITIE system do you use to make those elegant shapes and create those obturations and fill all those portals of exit? Well, you know as well as I do, over the last 15 years, NITIE systems have come and gone, and mostly they've gone. However, the most recognizable and foremost name in NITIE shaping remains ProTaper. The system is simple. It's reproducible, it's transferable, it's efficient, and it works. So let's get started and I'll show you what I mean. The example I've chosen to showcase the new, improved, and advanced Pro Taper Gold and to demonstrate the predictability and safety in performance of Pro Taper Gold is a maxillary molar with a double S turn. The canal and root, of course, go buckle and they also slide distally. The arrow points to the actual position of the portal of exit. So the great test for gold will be to see if we can preserve this position. Two-dimensionally on the radiograph, we obviously can see one curve, but you and I know there's actually two curves to this patient's distal buccal canal. The distal buccal canal has a dentinal triangle, which absolutely needs to be removed in order to have straight line access. So we pre-curve a 10 file to make it a smart file. And in a sea of sodium hypochlorite, slide into the distal buckle simply to explore, investigate. We're not in a hurry. We're looking for booby traps. We're looking for local knowledge. And what we're discovering early is the dentinal triangle is restrictive. So without attempting to go deeper or beyond that dentinal triangle, we bring in the rotary system to remove the triangle and then to shape and make a final preparation. So meet our new best friends. ProTaper Gold is exactly the same as ProTaper Universal with these exceptions. They are made of an advanced metallurgy which allows them to be more flexible and more resistant to cyclic fatigue. They literally want to crawl around glide paths. The handles are also shorter for increased visibility. SX is an auxiliary shaper designed to remove restricted dentin and it has exaggerated progressive geometries. Shaper 1 and Shaper 2 remove the coronal and middle restrictive dentin in the glide path established canal. 
Meanwhile, the finishers one, two, and three simply connect the dots as finishing instruments for the preparation for a cone fit and easy obturation. So back to our patient. We want to remove that triangle so that we have unfettered access into the distal buckle and we can float, follow, and brush our way there with the SX. So we brush and follow, brush and follow, and brush and follow. So we simply paint away that dentinal triangle. And you can see the dentin that we've removed from that triangle in the blades of the SX. So instead of now the dentinal triangle, we have a tunnel that we can easily follow. Step two is to irrigate with full strength sodium hypochlorite, which will put any dentin mud into suspension so we can easily re recapitulate and remove it. Remember, dentin mud and collagen are the fatal flaws of endodontics. Sodium hypochlorite will digest detached collagen and so irrigation is an absolute must and you can't do enough of it. Once we have thoroughly irrigated the chamber and the coronal portion of the canal, what's next? Well, what's next is to imagine ourselves arriving at the radiographic terminus with the 10 file. Take a deep breath, relax, curve the file from the shaft to the very tip. This makes again a smart file. Then by simply slipping and sliding into the now unfettered orifice again, we can see that with restraint and without pushing, we simply are able to follow easily this double S curve to the radiographic terminus which we know is slightly beyond the physiologic terminus, which is the exact position we want to be at to make a glide path, because we want to stay patent, otherwise the apical area will be clogged and will be short of the mark. Radiographically, we can see clear evidence that the file is beyond the radiographic terminus and can be further validated by the apex locator. What is a glide path? How do we make it? A glide path is a super duper, unbelievably loose tin validating a smooth tunnel from the orifice to the apex. So it is a smooth tunnel from orifice to apex. It could be short. If it could be curved, it could be multiple curves. Nitai doesn't care as long as the walls are smooth. So in vertical strokes, increasing amplitude over the traveling distance of the apical third, the tin file is followed and withdrawn until it is loose as a goose and we literally own the glide path. Some colleagues prefer to expand the glide path with a number 15 file or the new ProGlider, which is a single mechanical baby pro taper that can very successfully expand the glide path for any NITI system, including reciprocation. Well, it's time to remove restricted dentin and connect the dots. So purple S1 watchwords are brush and follow, brush and follow to length. So brush and follow, brush and follow, brush and follow. You might want to say that to yourself. Notice the restrictive dentin is removed. Then we bring in S2, purple, white, yellow, red. So white, S2. Again, the watchwords are brush and follow. Brush and follow. No pressure really at all, just the weight of the handpiece. Brush and follow. And the geometries are cutting where they need to cut to remove restrictive dentin. Finisher one, yellow. The watchwords here are the reverse of the shapers. Finishers are instead follow and brush, follow and brush. In animation, this is literally what happens with the Pro Taper Gold. They want to crawl around smooth glide paths. It's a very confident and freeing feeling. And you've got to experience this yourself to know what I'm talking about. 
In animation, you can see the flutes are not full yet of dentin. And when we inspect the flutes outside of the tooth, we can see that we would have had false tugback because that shape does not yet exist. So this is our cue to progress with F2. What are the watchwords? Follow and brush. Follow and brush. Follow and brush. And as you're experiencing Pro Taper Gold finishers particularly, you begin to understand the mastery of pace, rhythm, and flow. These instruments are designed to follow the next one. Notice the flutes are now filled with dentin, and in animation we can see that that shape would exist and does exist. And as we look clinically on the actual file itself, we can see the same validation. We have verified the shape. Now when do we fit the cone? We fit the cone when we finish shaping. When do we finish shaping? When the flutes are filled with dentin. Special machine molded gutta percha cones are followed to length and we can check the apparent length against our finisher and you can see it's quite close. We can do the same thing with the verifier in a carrier base obturation. This is designed for vertical compaction of warm gutta percha. And what we can do clinically, which we can't do of course in the mouth, is to observe that the position of the gutta percha cone fit, round peg into a square hole, is exactly where the original foramen was. And if we were to look at the root from the side, we would see radiographically that cone fits exactly at the radiographic terminus. Cone fit is a unique art in itself. The longer more curved and thinner the canals, the closer one wants to fit the cone. The straighter, wider, and shorter the canals, the further away the cone fits. So what would I do here? I would cut this typically back one millimeter for a vertical compaction of warm gutta percha. And if you're making a carrier base, you would make your length one millimeter short of that finisher that we used to transfer the length a moment ago. So there you have it. The predictability safety and simplicity of Pro Taper Gold. Shapers for shaping, finishers for finishing. And now it's your turn to experience and feel what I'm feeling. The treatment technique tip card is extremely valuable to review what we've talked about in terms of shapers and finishers. But the main thing that's important to remember is the distinction of the two words. For the shapers, remember, brush, follow, brush, follow, brush, follow. For the finishers, on the other hand, it's just the reverse. Follow brush, follow brush, follow brush. Nothing really has, in my experience, replicated the feeling that I've gotten following Pro Taper Gold down a canal. And I've discovered a newfound level of competence and consistency and confidence that I never knew before.